We're just two years away from witnessing one of the greatest showpiece events in sports history. Qatar will be hosting the 2020 FIFA World Cup for the first time in what would definitely be quite an interesting tournament for many reasons, and not only sporting ones. Before we start unravelling the plot, let's discuss something that has been in the game for long enough to have a drastic impact on it. And no, we're not talking about some of the most shocking goalkeeping kits you'd ever see, although that is definitely a topic we might want to shed some light on someday. We're talking about that one thing, one item without which the whole structure would surely collapse. Money, cash flow, investment and funding. In today's game, we might never be able to experience the adrenaline pumping action or such high levels of competitiveness if athletes were not paid over the odds to do their thing. Broadcast money has made football clubs and leagues strong enough to retain top talent. The English Premier League, for example, is the most lucrative league on the planet and has been boosted by huge global TV rights deals. This has strengthened even those clubs that historically struggle to retain their best players. Ten years ago, would Wolves have been able to retain star players such as Diogo Jota, Traore, or Raul Jimenez. Investors from all parts of the world coming in has also resulted in an inflation in prices, so the business as a whole is dealing with some crazy amount of money. However, in the midst of all this, various elements within the game have been involved in certain acts that have tarnished the game's reputation quite a lot, from that infamous Olympique de Marseille scandal to Calcio Poli scandal in Italy that resulted in Juventus' relegation to the recent drug investigation in Spain, the game has seen its fair share of such acts. However, there is one particular episode that has really shaken things up for the game at the highest of levels. Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another exciting episode on your favourite football channel, Goalside. Today, we're going to discuss a topic that has been in the thick of things in the past three years. But before we do that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and look out for a question in the video to have a chance of winning a $100 Amazon gift card. A few years ago, Qatar won the bid to host the 2020 World Cup, thus becoming the first Middle Eastern country to host the football spectacle that's viewed by billions of people every four years. And while the bids of Australia and USA were impressive, the Qataris on paper won the right to host the event after impressing the committee with its groundbreaking approach to ensure a viable experience for all stakeholders. And while the awarding of the bid did cause quite a stir globally, it was clear that Qatar had the financial capacity to pull it off. Moreover, if we're being very honest, Qatar has done an amazing job in preparing for the tournament. If you look at some of the stadiums that are being built, it's clear that the country is ready to host the event. Keeping the country's climate situation in consideration, the hosts are working on designing stadiums in such a way that scorching heat doesn't become a serious hindrance for athletes and the fans. However, today we're not here to talk about World Cup readiness. Today we're going to talk about the events that resulted in the decision makers giving their vote to Qatar to host the spectacle. When you discuss Qatar hosting the tournament, you'll come across words such as rigged, bribed, bought, and while it's never a good thing to call out someone, the story of the Middle Eastern country winning the bid is one of deceit, bribery, denial, and actions that really affected the game's global standing. Back in 2018, as part of a broad investigation into corruption at FIFA, a witness testified in a court that a senior FIFA official was paid at least $1 million in bribes to vote for Qatar to host the 2022 World Cup. Allegedly, late senior vice president at FIFA and the head of the Argentinian Football Association, Julio Grondona, told an Argentinian sports marketing executive that he's owed money in exchange for his vote that apparently was the deciding factor in helping Qatar secure the tournament. Even before that, Qatar's triumph was marred by allegations of bribery and misconduct. However, the said testimony which was given in a New York City court was one of the strongest pieces of evidence. Alejandro Berzaco, the Argentine sports marketing executive, pleaded guilty of paying millions of dollars in bribes to influential South American officials in exchange for broadcast rights to major regional tournaments. Rosako was the whistleblower and further testified that he not only arranged for a bribe for Grondona, but was also doing the same for another senior executive, Ricardo Teixeira. If that was not enough, the same individual had actually arranged $15 million in bribes for securing rights to the Copper America. Keeping in mind the close relationship, the now disgraced marketing executive accompanied Teixeira, Grondona and former Conmebol president, late Nicolas Leos, to Zurich for voting in the 2010 bid. Allegedly, Grondona informed Berzaco that Leos had not voted for Qatar in the early rounds, but after addressing down, the ex-president voted for Qatar. While Berzaco says that he has no idea about the source of the bribe received by Grondona, he claims to have been witness to a heated moment between the late president and Qatari official at a FIFA event several months later. According to Berzaco, Grondona was beside himself at rumours linking him to corrupt dealings. Basically, Grondona told them, the Qatari officials, you will pay me $80 million or write a letter saying you never paid me, Bozako said. 
Bozako's testimony clearly started an uncontrollable fire, with the marketing expert also implicating three more football executives, Jose Maria Marin, Manuel Berga and Juan Angel Napalt. In 2015, Leos and Teixeira were indicted on charges related to bribery schemes that also included selling lucrative football rights deals to sports broadcasters. Leos passed away in Paraguay last year while under house arrest. At the time of his death, he was fighting extradition to the United States. Teixeira, meanwhile, is still living in Brazil, who don't have an extradition treaty with the United States. Former Trinidad and Tobago official Jack Warner has also been fighting extradition since 2015 and was paid $5 million via several shell companies to vote for Russia in the 2018 event. More than half of the people who made the decision on the 2018 and 2022 World Cup bids have been accused but haven't been criminally charged as yet. These men also include former FIFA president Sepp Blatter. And although winning the bid has come at a severe cost to the game and Qatar's own reputation as a fair dealer in the market, it's unlikely to see the rights being snatched away from the tiny desert state. Even though many people have specifically urged FIFA to take such a drastic step, it remains clear that Qatar will host the World Cup, which might be shifted to November, in order to stay away from the hot summers in the country. On its part, Qatar has vehemently denied any wrongdoing. Qatar's Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, the organizers of the World Cup 2022, strongly denies the allegations contained within the court papers made public in the US on the 6th of April 2020, it said in a statement sent to Al Jazeera. They are part of a long-standing case, the subject of which is not the 2018-2022 FIFA World Cup bidding process. Despite years of false claims, evidence has never been produced to demonstrate that Qatar won the rights to host the FIFA World Cup 2022 unethically or by means that contravened FIFA's strict bidding rules. The SC maintains that it strictly adhered to all rules and regulations for the 2018-2022 FIFA World Cup bidding process and any claim to the contrary is baseless and will be fiercely contested. The latest criminal indictment by the US Department of Justice is not going to change things and Qatar will definitely be hosting the World Cup. And while this news does come off as a huge blow to many around the world and also poses a question mark over the moral compass being used at FIFA, taking a drastic measure would definitely come at a huge cost. Already the COVID-19 situation has messed up the football calendar in a big way. Apart from the German Bundesliga, no other football league in Europe has resumed. In South America the situation is the same. Upcoming tournaments such as the Copa America and AFCON are likely to be moved further down the road. Once the pandemic starts receding, the first priority would be to get the leagues back in action while observing the financial well-being of clubs who are already suffering a lot due to the global lockdown. In a similar vein, Champions League and Europa League schedules will have to be taken care of by UEFA while the European Championships moving to next year further complicate things. The European Showpiece event will be taking place in eight cities in Europe, so if you look at the logistics side of things, it would be very difficult to award the 2022 World Cup to a European country. South America is already being economically affected by the COVID situation, so seeing a South American nation host the tournament at such short notice seems like a recipe for disaster. The same can be said of most of the regions except for China, who have in the past shown an inclination towards hosting the tournament without being worried about the timeline. A question of sponsorship and broadcast money. Having said that, one of the main reasons why Qatar will retain the rights to host the tournament would be the fact that the Middle Eastern state has already spent a lot of money in developing stadiums and a sports city dedicated to the tournament, while the methods to win the bid might have been allegedly underhanded. One cannot deny all of the hard work put in by the Qataris to make the tournament one of the most memorable ones of all time. Broadcasters have already been locked and only a few packages are left to be sold. Campaigns are already in the cards for major sponsors who would not take kindly to having to redo everything given the fact that most marketing campaigns are rather region-centric. So here's your question. What's the name of the Qatar Stadium where the World Cup final will be held? Answer this in the comments and you could win a $100 Amazon gift card. Good luck everyone. All these elements go on to validate the argument that Qatar's follies might be punished, but only at an individual level. Those who are directly involved in any wrongdoing will be taken out of the picture, but the tournament itself will go on as scheduled. However, regardless of all the money being poured into the event, the 2009 Amnesty International report on migrant workers is a damning indictment on the country's eagerness to host the tournament. The report claims that a large proportion of the country's workforce were not protected by their employers and were exploited. Reportedly, 900 construction workers have lost their lives due to exploitation by their employers. The situation is even graver for female migrant domestic workers who are facing a lot of risks as well. According to Amnesty International's report, 20,000 workers have fled the country due to many issues such as delays in payment, excessive hours and poor working conditions. 
While we do believe that the build-up to this World Cup has really made all of the wrong noises, we hope that Qatar is able to tackle all these issues and put itself in a position where it's able to redeem itself in front of the global footballing community by staging a smoothly run and controversy-free tournament.